Hello again. I am back from my business trip to Boston. Uh, I've been in Boston for the last week for some printed circuit board training. Uh, and uh, I just thought I'd show you what came in the mail while I was gone. Uh, another package looks exactly like the old one because it came from the same eBay seller uh, from Russia. Where is it? Right there. Russia. And I don't want to zoom in too much there because I have blacked out the addresses here for everybody's privacy. And what is it? Well, you might have seen that there. Chip, 10 pieces, $5. So yeah, got these real cheap, uh, 50 cents each. And uh, can't find my normal knife, but I guess this box cutter will have to do. So this is, of course, for the Nixie Tube project that I've been working on. And uh, I'll go into why I need these chips later, but for now, let's uh, open it up. Be careful here not to cut my hand or the expensive ESD mat underneath, because that would be bad. All right, that's probably good enough. Raw, see, I can tear it. Look at that. I'm strong. I can tear plastic. All right, put that aside. And we have another one of these things eBay seller has done an excellent job packaging this, just as they had for the Nixie tubes. So a lot of credit goes to them because you got to package something really nicely if it's going to make it from Russia all the way to the United States. This one didn't have to go to the United States, back to Russia and back. This one came right to me, got here pretty quick actually, considering. I have some more parts on order for the Nixie tube project. Um, and we'll review those when we get them. But uh, for now, here's what we've got. Oh, sorry about that. And they're upside down. Great uh, video blogging skills I have here, huh? So, what are these? Well, I need some chips to drive my Nixie tubes. Uh, and, well, these particular ones happen to be made just for... Nixie tubes specifically. And I got a few extra. Uh, I didn't need this many, but I didn't really know what kind of quality chips I'd be getting, how old they were. Uh, it doesn't appear to be a date code on there, unless maybe was that the 27th week or of uh, 2015? I guess it could be. I didn't think they were still making Nixie tube drivers, but then again, these are clearly Russian characters on there. Uh, so perhaps these are brand new Nixie tube drivers manufactured in Russia. Uh, I figured they were new old stock, but yeah, perhaps these are brand new. Uh, surprise, surprise. Anyway, uh, let's get into why I need these, and we'll start from the beginning, I suppose. Okay, so really quick, I want to talk about why we need this particular driver chip. The fact remains, we're going to be having six of these uh, Nixie tubes, and well, each Nixie tube has 10 digits in it, so that's 10 pins that we have to drive, times six tubes. That's 60 pins that we would need on our micro in order to drive all of these tubes, um, since I decided not to go with multiplexing. Uh, moreover, these Nixie tubes take a fair bit of current, uh, about two and a half milliamps. Uh, the GPIO pins on most micro controllers, it's not gonna be able to handle that kind of current, or it'd be borderline. Um, you really don't want to be driving a Nixie tube directly from a microcontroller. It might be able to handle the current, but when this thing is first firing on and hitting its threshold voltage, you could end up with surges of current, and you're probably going to blow the pins on your micro. You want some kind of buffer or driver in there anyway. So, uh, we're using a K155ID1. It is a uh, Russian tube. The equivalent in the U.S. is the 74, yeah. TTL Logic Series 74141, and this particular chip is designed specifically for driving Nixie tubes. So what does this particular chip do? Well, it's a BCD, binary coded decimal, to decimal output. So it takes a binary representation of 0 through 9, it only needs the 4 bits to do that, and then it outputs 0 through 9 on uh, 10 different pins. So you've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, it'll decode a binary value into literally a, a decimal value, which is perfect. That's exactly what we need to drive our uh, Nixie tubes. 
So a BCD to decimal converter, yeah, you know, this particular 74141 seems odd at first because, well, there are BCD to decimal converters that aren't a 74141. I don't remember what it is. Uh, I can't remember the chip number, but there is actually a specific uh, TTL um, BCD to decimal converter. But like I said, this one has the output drivers, open collector transistor output drivers, capable of handling specifically the voltages and the currents that uh, Nixie Tube operates on. So very important that we have these particular drivers. So you can see now with our driver chips between the Nixie Tubes and the microcontroller, we managed to get these lines down to four for each chip, which drives one tube, four times the six tubes, that's 24 pins. So we go from 60 down to 24, and these are all low current TTL level outputs. So it really simplifies the design having these driver chips. And of course, we have a real-time clock up here uh, that communicates by some communication method, I haven't decided yet, uh, with our microcontroller, just to keep track of the time. And we have a five volt linear power supply that's gonna power our TTL logic, our real-time clock, our microcontroller. Uh, linear because we want it to be relatively noise-free. These are low signal levels, and we want to try to clean it up. That voltage is going to be coming from a 12 volt wall wart adapter. Uh, just a basic plug in thing, make it really simple. Um, <clears throat> and then also powered from our 12 volt wall wart is a 200 volt DC to DC converter. It's going to boost the uh, 12 volt DC from the wall adapter up to 200 volts DC at relatively lower current uh, to drive the anodes of our Nixie tubes. So that's uh, going to be a bit of a challenge. That's going to be our next uh, segment, how to design a power supply capable of doing that. So look forward to that. Uh, but for now, I have these driver chips in. They came in from Russia. This time it didn't take uh, as long. So let's go ahead and get these on a breadboard and I'll use some LEDs to show you how they work. Okay, so I have the circuit built up on the breadboard, admittedly quite sloppy. Yeah, I know, sorry. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I found something interesting as I was going through and looking at this chip. Hopefully I can zoom in and you can see that. Yep, uh, if I don't get in my own light here. Look at the bottom down here. 1527. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that might be a date code. We're looking at the 27th week of 2015. Remember, this is a specific Nixie, Nixie tube driver. You know, this chip was designed entirely for the purpose of driving Nixie tubes. Why is a chip to drive Nixie tubes still being manufactured in 2015? Wow, unbelievable. You know, I guess. It's Russia. I guess they're still using them for something, military applications. I don't know. Uh, obviously, there's some kind of a de demand. Uh, I can't imagine that the Nixie tube clocks of the U.S. is enough to keep it going, but eh, perhaps it is. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what we've got here is I put in all the LEDs. Uh, they're all being limited by this resistor up here. Um, what I've done is I've just tied all the resistors into the uh, positive port and then through this resistor to the plus 5 volts just because it was easier to lay it out nicely that way um, instead of using the 5 volt rail for the actual 5 volts and I have a dip switch here for our A, let's see, A, B, C, D um, our B, C, D input so I should be able to put a binary value on these switches on or off which will control which of the LEDs actually come on so let me go ahead, I'm going to try and cut some of the lights off here and see if you can see that a little bit better. Mm, try another one maybe. Yeah, it's getting really dark, I know, but uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be easy to see otherwise. So what we have here, the upper right, you can barely see it. Uh, that one is actually on right now. That is zero, which is not surprising because all of our switches are off. So let's put our... Uh, Ugh. think here, our ones place on and the number one LED goes on. So we'll turn that back off. 
that is our twos place and uh, no surprise the number two LED goes on there's three third LED goes on four number four LED goes on I'm sure you're getting the pattern by now five I'm sorry six seven eight and nine so we've gone through the whole binary uh, table here now interestingly this chip is supposed to have blanking in it so if you go above nine all LEDs should be off let's see what happens yep there it is works just as it should so that works really nicely um, you know all of our 10 LEDs went on and that's great but I don't think this gives a good representation of how our circuits gonna work um, you know I'm very happy that this chip that I ordered from Russia on a whim worked alright for me but uh, I don't know I think maybe we can go a step further let's write a small program for a microcontroller that I have just a little PIC 16F uh, part of the evaluation board you get with the PIC kit 2 and what we'll do is we'll actually drive um, some binary data to this chip and we should be able to see the LEDs go in sequence I'm sorry I've done it to you again I failed to use proper screen cap capture anyway uh, I want to show you I wrote a quick program here in C uh, with my uh, Picket 2 demo board and uh, it's just basically a quick program that can output BCD to this driver chip just to run it through its paces and see what it does so you can see I've got my main C file I've included the standard IO, standard library and the applicable header file for the PIC 16F690 chip I'm using let me scroll down we've got uh, the variables here that I use to set up my one second delay uh, a variable X that I'm using just to uh, loop between 0 and 9 uh, we're configuring it so we're not using the watchdog timer I set up some defaults here we're using the primary internal oscillator at 8 megahertz turn all of the analog inputs off we're just going to be using digital uh, and then we're setting all of the outputs on port C instead of inputs we want all outputs on the GPIO here is my delay loop that I've set up for one second between outputs which you know if it's gonna be a clock that makes sense and here is my main loop not much to it uh, it calls the set defaults which sets all of those defaults we talked about there's a while loop here so while true just loop forever and uh, here's my for statement for initial condition is x equals zero um, loop until X is less than or equal to 9 so there's our 0 to 9 and in each iteration increment X by 1 as so we come down here we see that we're sending the value of X which is anywhere between 0 and 9 as it counts up to port C which is outputting to the driver chip and then we've got 1000 milliseconds which is the same as one second delay uh, between counts and it just sits there and loops uh, forever between those Okay, hopefully this is relatively easy to see. We've got our Picket 2 here attached to the demo board with the PIC 16F690 on it. Uh, I've connected it to port C because port C, um, 0, C0, C1, C2, C3 uh, have LEDs on it. So you can actually see what the output count is in binary. Of course, it's upside down, so uh, you have to try to read binary and do it upside down. This is the least significant digit down here and the most significant up here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one. It just repeats. So you can see that our BCD is being sent over to our driver chip and there's zero, one, two, three, four, and it's just taking the binary coded data from the micro and outputting it as decimal information on our LEDs just as we did before 
Uh, so you can see we're getting one step closer to creating a clock here. Um, I'm debating whether I really want to get a Nixie tube out and go and connect all the pins up to show you. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that quite yet. For one, it's pretty late. It's uh, about 9.35 at night. I do have to work tomorrow and I have other things that I need to do before I can uh, go to bed tonight. So anyway, I'm probably going to call this uh, a video here. And uh, sorry, you probably just heard that. That was my dryer. That is among the things that I have to do. Uh, anyway, I'm probably going to cut the video off here. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope you learned something from it. On the next video, we're actually going to go through and design that 200 volt power supply uh, for the anodes of the Nixie tubes. I get the parts tomorrow and uh, we'll go through and start designing that, hopefully build it up and do a little bit of testing on it. Anyway, if you found that interesting, make sure you click like, uh, subscribe if you already haven't done so at this point, and follow me on Twitter at Ohms at Home. See ya.